Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, portfolios, LinkedIn profiles, and YouTube channels maybe. So, special thanks to Deepak for sending in his resume and portfolio and LinkedIn today. I'm gonna to be going through them. I think he does a pretty good job, but there's a couple things that he could tweak that could really make him appeal quite a bit more to employers. There's a few personal elements that I think he should add that'll hopefully increase his chances of landing an internship, research, or a job that he's looking for. If you'd like to have your projects, portfolios, resumes, LinkedIn profiles, etc., reviewed by me, be sure to comment below and let me know, and shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. That'll be pinned in the comment and linked in the description as well, all that information about reaching out to me. It does take me a while, so any new ones it might take six, seven months for me to actually get to, because I'm only doing one of these a week. But I've addressed in a couple other videos how I might try and work through these a little bit faster uh, with some partnerships, etc. Also, at the end of this video, I'll be going through two questions uh, from you guys, the subscribers. So if you have a question you'd like me to answer at the end of the next project review that I do, definitely leave that below as well. I'm trying to really spur more engagement and it always helps me if you guys have a little extra reason to watch to the end. So I'll just jump right into this and uh, let's see if we can improve what Deepak is working with here. So let's start with his portfolio website. I really like this. It's very straightforward. You scroll down and you see his projects right away. You can go straight to the code by clicking on these. And he also explicitly has hackathon experience here. You can link to his resume and LinkedIn and his GitHub there. This I think is a very good general portfolio framework. I would like just a little more information about uh, Deepak here. So you know, maybe you can talk about his interests. I think in a, a couple a couple reviews ago, someone had a picture of their dog and they talked about their service experience. This is a great place and one of the few places where it's really acceptable to talk about yourself. You can talk about, again, your interests, maybe the best book you read recently or something you're looking to try and learn this year. It doesn't even have to be data science related. I think employers, they aren't expecting to see that, but it's a pleasant surprise when you're interviewing someone. The behavioral element is, it's very, it's very subjective or, or it is a relationship or interest based. So you want to give employers something to talk about with you. You know, if you're just a robot coming in, there's going to be a little bit less of a connection. So let's jump over to his GitHub profile. Again, this is pretty good. He has pinned his uh, most relevant contributions up top. And um, I, I think that this is a good, a good uh, about him. I will say, I think he spelled modeling wrong. So that's something you really want to be careful of, especially in your high level profiles. I'd make sure I think it's just one L in modeling. So, uh, you know, especially for international students where English might not be your first language, you really want to make sure that you're, you're doubling down on perfect grammar in your, um, in your GitHub profiles and on your resume. So let's go to a couple of the projects that he did. I think that the readmes are good, but they're kind of the bare minimum of what we should be having here. So we have a problem statement, data source, approach, and results. Those are all of the relevant things that you really need to have. So he checks all the boxes, but you can go a step further. I always like seeing a picture of the results here. I also don't really care much about the optimization results, so your, what your accuracy is. That to an employer isn't really that important. What's more important is how you're actually gonna be using these solutions or how these solutions could be used. So let's say the humpback whale identification. Okay, what, what are the practical implications of this? This could save biologists, um, you know, hundreds of hours or something if they can more accurately identify these. This, this can save people time. It can either save people, you know, it can save people money or it can make people money. And it's important to frame the solutions like that. Like what is the value? What is the impact? Uh, a while ago, uh, in again, one of the past reviews, I'll try and link it, I forget the guy's name, but he, he had a, a great Spotify um, Spotify solution where he was helping, where he was predicting if he would like a song or not. That has 
clear tangible value to him that's saving him time it's increasing his enjoyment so thinking about the implications of any of the projects you do and talking a little bit about that will set you sell, it will set you apart from a lot of the other other candidates so i would definitely recommend taking that into consideration again deepak does a great job talking about the results and he includes them i'd actually like to see them maybe up top but there's no expansion on that there's no um, business value or business understanding that's implied through this. Um, one thing I do really like that uh, Deepak did is he created a front end for this car price prediction and he made a little YouTube video on it. I think that that's a nice touch. It shows that he can, you know, he's willing to think outside of the box, but he also, you know, only links that here. There, there isn't much talk about it. Um, when you produce those things, I highly recommend sharing them. Or, you know, he could embed the YouTube video in the in this portion here as well. So just another small touch that I would recommend that he iterate on or he improve upon that would make this already strong GitHub uh, portfolio even stronger. I mean, we do want to really clearly communicate the value of our work and our work isn't valued in accuracy. It's valued in dollars and cents to these companies. So whenever you can, I would try to make sure that there's either a dollar or a time amount attached to a lot of these products or, or an enjoyment amount in the case of some of the previous projects that I talked about here. So let's quickly jump to Deepak's LinkedIn profile and then we'll go over a couple of things that I noted on his resume and we'll wrap this one up with a couple of the questions that I had addressed before. So I think this is a, a good, uh, LinkedIn profile, he has quite a few connections. He's clearly been active. Um, and he, he has, you know, he's commenting quite a bit on posts. I think that that's good. One thing that I would again recommend that he expand on is this about statement. This is a place where you can talk about yourself and you definitely shouldn't be shy about talking about yourself. Again, in the employment process, it is a human transaction. We are trying to understand other people. They will not hire you if they don't like you or they don't know anything about you or they feel like uh, because the less people know about you in the employment setting the more of a liability you become if you can't understand how someone else thinks or how they work or what they're interested in um, that's scary to a lot of people not not just employers so i really recommend just you know thinking about yourself what are you interested in i'm very vocal i i, I really love golf i like the outdoors i think physical fitness and personal improvement are important it's okay to talk about those things, you know, even if, you know, if you like, uh, if you like anime, if you like painting, if you like uh, a, a bunch of these different things, that just gives a little bit of context for people. And you never know who might also like the same things that you do. You know, if, if uh, you know, uh, if someone sees the, you're again, let's choose painting. If someone also is an artist, they're, you're going to go so far up in their book, it's not even funny because you'll have that immediate connection. Uh, aside from that, I think that all of these are fine. Uh, I would maybe like to see a little bit more, you know, student activity in under the um, under the education. Uh, talking about that, I think, provides a lot of value, showing that you're not just a student; you're involved with other things. That again goes with that human element I was just talking about. So. Let's jump over to Deepak's resume. I blurred out his, uh, or I whited out his um, personal information. So hopefully that won't be that won't be an issue. But I, I like I like this. It's good education. I think the coursework is something I've really stressed a lot fairly recently. I would generally recommend putting the technical skills even above the education. I don't think that that's a, a hard and fast rule, though. I think it's it's fine how it is. One thing I don't see, he has a lot of very good technical skills. I really like how he's included all the packages that he routinely uses. But for a data scientist, you probably also want to put a lot of the algorithms you're familiar with. So different types of regression, different types of classification, different types of clustering or, or uh, dimensionality reduction. So if you're really familiar with, it looks like he uses logistic regression, support vector machines, k nearest neighbors, a random forest, I would put a lot of those tools. Um, he also doesn't have TensorFlow or PyTorch, 
which is what Keras sits on top of. And that's generally a keyword that people are looking for. So if I, I think that if you understand Keras, you have at least enough TensorFlow knowledge uh, to put it on your resume. So I'd recommend putting that there. The, the projects, I really like how he talks about them. He has quantifiable means, but again, I think he should be leading with the outcomes. That's something that in business we talk about bottom line up front. And a lot of people, again, don't really care about the, uh, what, what approaches you used. They're more concerned with the, the results, but also the implications of the results. So if you could, I would recommend trying to talk about, even if this is a Kaggle solution, talk about how these findings could be used to create value for someone or to help someone. I would also generally recommend putting the uh, professional experience above the projects. So the hierarchy for like value of experience is job, internship, research, projects, um, like, and then like coursework projects. And that doesn't mean, projects can absolutely get you a job, projects are very good, but people naturally in the work realm care a little bit more about the internships and the uh, real work experience than they do about projects. It's, it's a reality. So I would make sure that if you do have good experience, like, like this one that he has, I would put that above the project experience. I think that that's, that's really it in terms of the resume, the project, the portfolio, and the LinkedIn thoughts. Again, I think Deepak did a really good job, but there's just a, a couple subtle adjustments he could make uh, and add that personal touch that I think would make him appeal quite a bit more to employers. I also think Deepak, because he is doing a master's in analytics, there's a good opportunity for him to do research. And I think research would also really strengthen the sort of lack of work experience that he has. So I, you know, I'm assuming Deepak's gonna watch this. That would be one thing I would, I would try and focus on is getting research because it might be a slightly lower bar there. Now let's get on to uh, a couple of questions that I had found. Okay, so the first question is, hey Ken, when describing one's skills with ML on the resume, is it better to name specific models or more general techniques, i.e. skills, machine learning, linear regression, SVM, PCA, or skills, machine learning, regression, classification, dimensionality, reduction, etc." So I touched on this a little bit in this video. That's why I thought it was relevant to bring it up. I think that you could do either way, but it probably makes more sense if you have real specific knowledge to, to do the specific uh, linear regression, SVM, PCA approach, rather than just talking about these things broadly. I, I don't really toot my own, my own horn very often, but on my personal resume, this is one thing I think it would benefit if you guys took away from it. So I have the uh, skills set up. So I say regression, and then I say which types of regression techniques. So it's kind of a hybrid of these things. So I say regression, and then I say linear regression, ridge regression, random forest, uh, support vector regression, those types of things. So it shows that I know which techniques are associated with um, each of the different problem types. And um, again, I would not recommend a lot of the things on my resume, as you can see in my resume video, which I my, my critiquing my own resume video, which I've linked above and below. But that is one positive takeaway that I would have. The next thing is, hi Ken, do you think a GitHub portfolio is better than a personal website that contains all of your information and projects, or should I do both? So my advice would be to, I, I think Ibrahim knows the answer to this question, and it would be to do both. A GitHub is always gonna be a little bit more valuable because it shows that you know how to use Git. But a personal website can show that you also know how to do some form of web development. You can make a product for someone. So the combination of both shows that you have both of those different skills and you, you, you definitely want to try and do both. It is not the end of the world if you don't have a personal website, but I really do believe that it can help your chances. So I think that that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope me answering the questions at the end was helpful to you all. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.